So we've been talking about the difference between micro and macro evolution, and we talked about the fact that speciation is macro evolution, is when a species go from one type to a different type. And we talked about the fact that microevolution becomes macroevolution when enough differences accumulate within populations for these populations to be incapable of crossing with each other, at which point you call it a new species. And that is the origin of species. And when Darwin published his book, The Origin of Species, he didn't know about much of the things we know about today in terms of the genetic composition of part of evolution, how mutations, recombinations, genetic drift, hybridizations, polyploidy, and all other kinds of genetic flow and other kinds of genetic changes will lead to actual evolutionary process. But he did know that natural selection and isolation were crucial for the evolutionary process to take place. And that changes in a species leading to uh, the splitting of a species would involve a process that we call isolation. So isolation is going to be crucial for speciation to take place. So for all the differences that you see in life to occur, these life forms will have to be separated from each other so that they can evolve separately from each other. And this could happen in one of two ways. Sometimes two species will come from one species. Sometimes, uh, like the finches that we saw and Dar Darwin talked about. So you see that none of these two species up there look exactly like the species that's down here on the right side. And that's because the, they both change since the environment probably changed and have different pressure. But there needs to be some sort of separation between the two of them so this can actually occur until they actually evolve separately enough that they cannot cross with each other anymore and at that point we call them two different species. Now sometimes one might look more like the original than the other, so the one on the left side certainly does, but it still will be different. If you look carefully, you will see morphological differences between the two species, both in the beak and the coloration pattern. Other times you see one species gradually changing to another species over time because of selective events across many generations. And you see that's happening here on the left side. Either way, it's speciation because the species over here will not be able to cross with that one over there. And none of these three here will be able to cross with each other. And so they're all different species. So it's basically when the gene pool of one species changes into two different species or one species changes into another, when enough genetic differences gather the population for them to be incapable of crossing with each other. You see here in the wild boar example of the gene pools changing. And that's what basically speciation is all about. The, the spotted owls you see down here are showing that. They are very similar. Now, the untrained eye might actually be able to tell the difference between the Mexican and the northern spotted owl. But they are, in fact, different species. They actually have the same genus, the same species name, but they actually have two different subspecies. And these are sexual, an actual species that's in the process of splitting. It's, they're almost capable of actually reproducing with each other, but the offspring of the two of them are not actually going to be as viable as the as, as offspring of just um, their subspecies. And that means that they're in the process of actually splitting from each other. And so for those who say that uh, macroevolution has not been observed, there are multiple evidences which we'll be discussing throughout this lecture series of these events actually taking place. Here's the northern spotted owl is a perfect example of that. And notice that they are geographically separated. Then. Some of them live in a desert area of, this, of the southern um, southwest United States and Mexico. And you also have others that live in California and in the northern northwest part of the US and so you see that that's going to become a geographical separation which will lead to differential pressures from the environment and therefore different natural selection process so the isolation and then the natural selection acting together will lead to differentiation between these two species here's a few more examples of how isolation leads to differentiation we talked about the fact that animals that have different looks will match their environments differently and therefore sometimes tend to avoid the environment of the other animal and that will lead to separation that will slow down the chances of them actually crossing with each other you see the salamanders that spread around California, but encounter different environments, and as a consequence, all uh, change differently across time. We talked about this before. The adaptive radiation seen in the Galapagos finches of Darwin, each came from the same ancestral ground seed-eating finch, but across time, as they were exposed to different environments with different kinds of 
food, they actually had differential selection practice pressure and therefore evolved into different kinds of finches, all from the same common ancestor. They show similar homologous structures, but they had differences between them. Again, it's an example of how the similarities and differences are evidence of evolution. Also, across time, you can see this. With, for example, the example we talked about with the horses, as they changed across time because of environmental changes. Notice, of course, that many of the branches of the horses are no longer around. They have actually gone extinct. They didn't make it. But many of the horse branches actually did survive, and some of the ones which are around today still are descendants from those branches. All right? But the other ones may have been uh, excluded from the population as the environment changed from the drier to more grassland environment and browsers had to change into grazers because of that. And so you see changes that occur because of changes in the environment. And isolation, temporal in this case, will lead to speciation between the species. Now, here's more examples. Lizards living in different islands on, the, on this archipelago will look completely different from each other. The, the necks of the tortoises in the different islands of the Galapagos, as seen by Darwin, because they had different foods. The guppies that live in different pools with more or less predation, having different coloration patterns. The one with the more predation had to look more bland to kind of blend in with the environment, and the one with less predation made itself had the chance of actually looking more sophisticated, and sexual selection actually enhanced its colors. Look at the continental separation between the, f the members of, the f of, of this group of animals, which all descend from the same original animal that lived around the time the Pangaea was still together. But now, the different continents, we have the giant armadillo, the giant anteater, the giant pangolin, and the spiny anteater, all from the same common ancestor, but evolving in separate continents over millions of years, leading to completely different looks. All of these are examples of how isolation will lead to differential natural selective processes because the different environments in which these animals are exposed to. Even though they share the same common ancestor, they will actually be different from each other because the, of the environmental pressure is different. And there are going to be two kinds of this separation. The first type is called premating or prezygotic isolation. And that has something to do with the uh, biological species test. And this is going to be examples of how there are going to be different species because they're going to live in different places. They're going to uh, do different things. They're going to uh, do different things at different times. And they will have different structures, which will lead them to not be able to cross with each other. So very similar to the concepts of species we discussed earlier. And there's also post-mating isolation, which is isolation after already making the zygote. And it has something to do with fitness of the organism. Because sometimes you are going to successfully make the zygote, but you're not going to be able to survive as well as you should if you were actually members of the same species. And we'll talk about these differences on the next video. And we'll talk about reproductive isolation leads to differentiation among species and therefore speciation. See you guys then.